And even so, that's where we stand today. We live in a day where everyone wants to just question God. Everyone wants to hear a command and go, well, wherein does that apply to me? Wherein hath, hath God loved me? Wherein have, have, I, have I robbed God? God will give direct statements to even people confessing and professing to be Christians, and they'll say, ah, that's not for us. The dispensational dipsticks that they are. Taking scriptures and dividing them up and passing them off as if they don't apply. Having some sort of reasoning why they shouldn't heed word of God in particular ways. And yet here, we stand today, just as is recorded in verse 15 of chapter 3. And now we call the proud happy. Yea, they that work wickedness are set up. Yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. And do we not live in a day where those that are proud, you know, the pride that marches up and down the streets, the, the pride that's waved in your face is some sort, of, some sort of rainbow stealing the sign of God, the pride that's entering your schools, entering your workplace, that same mentality. And what, do, what did they call it in these days? They called the proud happy. It's another word for happy. Okay. Okay. The book of Malachi was written at a time just before the revelation of God was to cease for 400 years. And at this time, the people were calling the proud gay. Instead of wicked, filthy, disgusting, all the things that the Bible would call them. Right. right? And we're in a day just like that. And the same people are crying out, Everyone's good in their own minds. He's a little good. He's a little good. We're all good people. I'm a good person. And they're mocking, as it said in 2 Peter. Where, where is the promise of his coming? For since the days of our fathers, everything just continues as it is. Nothing has changed. And here we are. God wrote a book called Revelation. Since this book was penned, it's been about 1,900 years, whereby God has not revealed himself word, written, spoken. So do you think there's something here in the book of Malachi that we can learn from? Do you think we can see that there is the same type of mentality happening then as it happened now? Can we not apply these truths? When God says, I loved you, we should say, yeah, yeah, Lord, you have. Instead of prolonging and fighting against him and saying, nah, we're going to have you love us. You haven't loved us. The proud are happy. Every man does what's right in his own sight. We live in a time, and God is about to say, time is enough. Look at verse 4, or sorry, chapter 4, verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts. It shall leave them neither root nor branch. There will be nothing left of the proud of which we are speaking. The happy. And do we not live in that same time? When we read the book of Revelation, some people say, oh, that's really hard. They're going to burn out. There's going to be nothing left to stumble. Read the book of Revelation. Again, we are in a window whereby God has revealed himself, but he is coming again. And the same promises that you read about here, where behold, I said before Elijah the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children of the fathers as they come, and smite the earth with a curse. That same action, that same activity was fulfilled when Christ came, but he has promised similar things. Behold, what does he send? The man of sin be revealed. What does God send? Wars, rumors of wars. What does God send? Signs and wonders. The sun and moon being darkened before the coming of the great, great and dreadful day of the Lord. He has given the same thing. A sign for us to realize that God is coming again. And when he cometh, verse 1, shall be fulfilled. The proud, they all that do wickedly, shall be burned up. No root, no branch even left. There is great hurt coming to this world. Amen? Amen. There is great suffering, and pain, and anguish coming to this world. But we have the opportunity to not fight what God says, not constantly question what God says. We want to be servants of God. 
Well, I'm exhorting servants to be obedient unto their own masters and to please them well in all things, not answering again. We have the ability and the opportunity to meet together often. We have the ability and opportunity to come together, to return unto God, to seek Him, to have discernment, to judge who's righteous and who's wicked. In other words, to be able to try their works by fire and have discernment to know who is one of us and who is not, who's going to be burned up in the fire and who will abide it. God has given that discernment to the people of the time of Malachi when He wasn't revealing Himself in specific ways through the Scriptures. He's given us, I believe, that same opportunity. So while there's great hurt coming to this world, let's choose rather to be of them that don't receive hurt, but receive healing. 